Hi everyone, we're continuing with graphing sine and cosine functions. Before, we talked about the impact of putting a number in front of sine or cosine. That led to vertical stretching or shrinking, maybe a flip. Now we're going to talk about what happens if we put a number in front of x. We're substituting. These are substitutions. We're substituting x with bx. How do we graph y equals a sine or cosine of bx? Again, these involve substitutions. Okay, subbing x to bx. Okay, well, let's experiment. Here's y equals sine of x, classic sine wave. What happens with y equals sine of 2x? Okay. What happens if we put a two in front? Going from blue to green, it's a horizontal squeeze. Now again, from chapter one, uh, 1 1.4, remember that the horizontal transformations were confusing, right? For example, normally if you stick in a two, if you stick in a two in front, that's a vertical stretch. But if you, sub if you substitute x with two x, that's not a horizontal stretch, it's a horizontal squeeze. Remember, when you substitute, you get a surprise. When you substitute, you get a surprise. When you substitute x with 2x, you don't get a horizontal stretch, you get a horizontal squeeze. Okay, what about y equals sine of 5x? That's even more hyper, okay? That's even more squeezed in, in purple. The period shrinks. Notice that as p increases, the period shrinks. We can think of b as an aging factor. In fact, look at it this way. Here's a graph of y equals sine of x. Uh, by the way, my former professor, Peter Doyle, came up with the idea of b being an aging factor. Um, if b is two, look at this. Before, we had one cycle in blue between zero and two pi. Now in green, we have two cycles. One, two. B here, the two here, tells you the number of cycles on the new graph that fits, that fits into the old period, two pi. On the blue graph, you had one cycle between zero and two pi. On the green graph, you have two cycles between zero and two pi. That means the period, by the way, is half that, or pi, right? From here to here, it's pi. Accordion effects, it's kind of like we're squeezing, we're squeezing and stretching an accordion here the instrument. Let's assume B is positive. We're assuming for now B is positive. If B is greater than one, surprise, it's not a horizontal stretch, it's a horizontal squeeze, right? Here B is two, we get a horizontal squeeze from blue to green. If B is between zero and one, like one half, we get a horizontal stretch. I'll show you. Uh, so instead of Y equals sine of X, we have Y equals sine of one half x, okay, we're going from blue to green, the thick green graph, that's stretched out. So we have only half of a cycle between zero and two pi. The full period is four pi from here out to here. The period is doubled. Okay, and that's a horizontal stretch. So the period of y equals a sine of x or cosine of x is two pi. Remember, a had no impact on the period. A affects amplitude and the flipping aspect. A had no impact on the period. It was two pi for these. But b can have an impact on the period. In general, the period, uh, which is the width of a cycle, the width of a piece of wallpaper, the period for these guys is in general two pi over b. We're assuming b is positive. Uh, if b is negative, or if b could be negative, then to be safe, put absolute value. But if we know b is positive, then the period is given by 2 pi over b. As b increases, the period shrinks. As b increases, the period shrinks, and we get a squeeze. Again, we can think of b as an aging factor. The higher b is, the more cycles we can fit in where we just had one cycle before. So again, if we have y equals sine of 2x, we have two cycles where there used to be just one. Y equals sine of 3x, we have three cycles. 
where we used to have just one on blue. What if B is negative? Then that's kind of weird. Then the idea is that we kind of graph backwards and we want to, want, we want to avoid that. So if B is negative, let's go ahead and apply the even odd properties. Because if B is negative, you're in a bad place and you're going to want to fix that immediately so that the new value of B is positive. We want B to be positive when we start analyzing. All right, so for example, let's graph uh, a few cycles of Y equals negative seven sine of negative three X. Big problem, the negative sign there. B is negative, it's negative three. We hate the fact that B is negative. So we're going to apply the even odd properties. We do not want to graph backwards. It's like a time reversal. Well, is sine even or odd? Is sine even or odd? Sine is odd, which means that this negative sign basically pops out. We, okay, so sine of negative three X is the opposite of sine of three X. Negative seven times negative one sine of three X is positive seven sine of three X. Informally, the way you can look at this, because sine is an odd function, sine is odd, and negative three is a factor on the X, this negative sign pops out and changes the negative, changes the negative to a positive. So both of these basically knock out. The negative sign pops out, changes the negative to a positive. We don't have any more negative signs. So here we have an easier problem. Instead of graphing y equals this, let's graph y equals seven sine of three X. And that's okay because these are equivalent equations. They have the same graph. Graphing this is just as good as graphing that. It's the same graph. And how do we graph this? A equals seven, amplitude is seven. There's no flipping, A is positive. B equals three, so we're squeezing in horizontally. We have three cycles now where there used to be one. The amplitude is seven. The period is two pi over B. B is three now. We take the new value of B. The period is two pi over three. So we have this. The graph goes from negative seven to seven. The amplitude, the half height is seven. The period is two pi over three. So from zero to two pi over three, as far as X goes, that gets one cycle. We have another cycle from two pi over three to four pi over three, and a third cycle in blue from four pi over three to two pi. The purple cycle, the red cycle, the blue cycle, we can fit three cycles now where we used to have one if B were just one over here. We have three cycles between zero and two pi. All right, uh, Desmos confirms that. Here's Y equals seven, that stretches vertically by a factor of seven. Whoops. Y equals seven of three X. Wow, <laughs> very hyper. I'll zoom in. By the way, uh, one way to verify equivalence, graph the original. We're just gonna recolor the graph. This is the same graph. Y equals negative seven sine of negative three X. We're just recoloring the graph. It's the same graph. Equivalent equations, same graph. All right. So once again, uh, as we change B, we change the period. Y equals seven sine of X, period is two pi, like before. What about Y equals seven sine of one third X or X over three? Uh, when in doubt, write x over three as one third x. B here is what? B here is one third. That leads to a stretch. We're stretching, okay? It's stretched out by a factor of three. The period, two pi over B is one third. If you divide by one third, you're multiplying by the reciprocal three. Two pi times three is six pi. It's stretched out. So again, um, going from y equals, sine, uh, y equals seven sine of three X, Y equals seven sine of X, not as hyper, Y equals seven sine of 
one third x more spread out. Next up, we're going to frame one cycle and be detailed with the key points and coordinates and then translations next time.